let's get to it. And I, I'm going to, I have a, and, and this is going right down the line of doing, doing some research regarding events just before majors. I'm not, I'm not taking McElroy this week on my picks, but I am because I, I, and and and, be, and it's only because I am just I, I need a win and one and done, and I'm seriously thinking of, of, of putting Rory in there, and I'm going to tell you why, and that's because I really think Rory's going to win this week. Um, let's take a look at some real cool history lessons from Rory McIlroy before majors. Last year, he won the Scottish Open, and th- and that of course was right before, and uh, he also. Uh, won the Canadian Open in 2022 and 2019, and that was before the U.S. Open. He won Wells Fargo in 2021, which was two weeks before the PGA, but it was his last event before the PGA. He won match play, if you want to throw in even the so-called fifth major. He won match play before TPC in 2015 and went Quail Hollow the week before the TPC in 2010. And he won the week before the PGA at a WGC event. I believe it was the Bridgestone in 2014. So Rory is probably the player that has won the most before majors. Uh, that's how he, that's how much he kind of takes it seriously. Mm-hmm. And what's also interesting is I mentioned the U.S. Open, I mentioned the Open Championship, which came uh, after the Scottish Open. I also mentioned the PGA. I did not mention the Masters. So this is the only event. This is the only pre-event uh, schedule that he has not uh, taken advantage of to win before a major. And we also know it's the yeah. only major he hasn't won yet. So I kind of like all that, like karma. I also think that we all know that Rory is like just, you know, he's kind of, you know, he's getting close. He just hasn't put it all together. So I yeah. think out of all those players that you're talking about, you know, is their head going to be on straight? This is the player that has proven, yes, he wants to win. He wants to play at his best before a major. And considering the slow start he's gotten off to and the field this week, I see him actually as a pretty good play at 9-1. Yeah, I'm with you that I do think Rory's close. I mean, you look at his results so far this year. He doesn't have a finish better than 19th. Um, but, but but again, I, I do think he's close because he, he, he's had stretches in most, if not all, these tournaments where, where like it's looked like he was going to win or at least be in the in the mix where he, he gets hot. He's just had too many bad holes, too many mistakes, you know, too many water balls on those Florida courses, too many you know, you know misfires with his irons. Um, so he just needs to clean that stuff up. Yeah, he, I'm sure he would love to have a strong event heading into the master. So, um, yeah, I mean, listen, if you made me pick Rory at nine or Ludwig at 12, I'd, I'd rather go with Rory at nine. Yeah, I, I, I didn't put him on my picks this week. And that's only because, like I said, I am seriously thinking of putting him also in my one and dones. So um, I didn't want to put it all in one basket. But anyway, um, he's played here twice. He missed the cut in 2022 at one over par. And in his first and only appearance before that was back in 2013. He was runner-up at 12 under par. Uh, and by the way, even though, like you said, his best finish is 19th, he has improved his results just about every event so far this season. He just hasn't taken the big jump. Um, yeah. But this is by far the first event he's played yet this season where he has a field that is completely beatable. Because every other event he's played in has been where all the top players in the world have attended. So, all right. True. Ludwig, as we mentioned, seven over par, missed the cut in 2022, and he's 12 to 1. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's not like he's on fire as well. So, I just, I, I, we both are a little bit stunned of why he's in this spot. Yeah, but totally. All right. Next up, uh, we have the next group would be Spieth, Matsuyama. At twenty to one, and Homa at twenty-two to one, and um, if I had to take one of these, I'd go with Matsuyama just because I think he's playing better right now. Uh, yep. They've all played here before. Spieth has the best resume because he won here back in twenty twenty-one, and he's a Texas boy. Um, uh, but the last what four events for Jordan: two missed cuts, a thirtieth, and a DQ. That's not good. Matter of fact. He, in last year in the Open Championship, he was 10th in the world. He's now 19th. 
So he's headed in the wrong direction. Matsuyama, meanwhile, is headed in the right direction. And he also has at least one good history. It was the best history that he remembers, and that is his first PGA win ever. It was at the Memorial back in, uh, I forget what year it was, but it was his last, uh, it was his tune-up for the U.S. Open that year. So, uh, and, and his last three events, 6th at TPC, 12th at Bay Hill, and winning Genesis, 15th year last year at 7 under par. Yeah, Hideki would definitely be my bet among these guys as well. Am I actually, I strongly considered him. He's actually first in my model this week. And did you know at the players uh, last time out for Hideki, that was the second best tee to green performance of his entire career. He gained 14.2 strokes tee to green. He actually lost two strokes putting, still came sixth. Wow. Um, so yeah, he continues to hit it really well. Um, he's live this week and he's, he's definitely live next week at Augusta. Yeah, he might be a really good wager as well if you want to take a look at other future other majors down the road just because um now look he he can win two green jackets we know that that's possible but it is hard to do especially within a short period of time so i might look at because you would think that and i'm just guessing but you would think his odds are probably the lowest at the masters so you would think that if they you're getting, should be, yeah, they should be. Yep. So you're probably getting, so you might want to take a look at, uh, um, how he's fared in some of the other majors and definitely take one of those three PGA U S open open and put some money on him Cause I would right now, the way he's playing, yep. he looks like he's, he's yep. ready for another major championship this year. Uh, yeah, and Homer just, uh, he doesn't look like he's, um, going in the direction that we would have liked to have seen him go. It looked like he was about mm-hmm. to, and now he's mm-hmm. kind of flailing away again, but it's just a small kind of hiccup maybe, but he's only played here three times and he hasn't really shown much. So I believe he's a uh, five over par uh, total in three appearances. Yeah. Homo, homo is not good at the players. Um, and you know, that, that happens to guys, guys can struggle on that course pretty easily. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't see him as, as a, I don't think this is a great spot for him um, after what we saw at, at, at uh, the players. Okay, so now we got some picks coming in. So we've got Fitzpatrick, Connors, and Morikawa at 25 to 1. And then we have uh, Fleetwood on Norin at 30 to 1. So uh, let's start with your top pick, and that's Colin Morikawa at 25 to 1. He'll be playing here for the first time. Uh, he's off to a slow start again. We are wondering about uh, what's gone on with Marikawa the past year and maybe a half. But um, he's you would think he's in the category of top players who want some positive momentum to go into yeah. Augusta. He doesn't want to play like this, so you know that he's going to try to play well this week. You would think that's that's his goal. Yep. Yeah, and, and you know, really this is just a number play for me, Like I think long term in this field i think morikawa is what at least a top four player in this field you could, you could even argue that he's the second best player in this field behind rory i think and he, he struggled in florida you know 45th of the players miscaught at api he's he's just not good in florida bermuda easily his worst surface you look at through his career he just he hasn't played well um on those golf courses he was fine on the west coast you know 19th at genesis 14th at pebble beach uh, came fifth at the century in his first event of the season so um i i don't i don't think it's as bad as it it looked the last two events um but again this is mostly just a, a value play in a you know weaker field getting morikawa at 25 to 1 the guys won a bunch on the pga tour i'm just going to take my chances with them yeah that's that's kind of the way that i felt uh with the two players that i took in this area here fitzpatrick and fleetwood um, because, uh, and, and again, I, I looked at their resumes prior to open to, uh, majors and, uh, let's remember that Fitzpatrick, uh, in 2021, he was runner up the week before, uh, that, uh, open championship, uh, in the 2022 at the P, uh, the week before the PGA, actually the event prior, it was two weeks before he was runner up. Uh, and before winning the U.S. Open in 2022, the week before he was 10th, he was also 10th the week before the U.S. Open in 2021, and he was 6th the week before the Open Championship in 2022. So when the last couple of years when he's been at his best, he has played well prior to majors, and just like you're saying, I think he's a good value play in this field this week. 
Yeah. Uh, he's coming off a fifth at the players. He has been inconsistent. That's the thing that I'm a little bit concerned with because he's been up, he's been down, and so forth. So is he down this week to be up next week? So that's the only thing that concerns me with Fleetwood. Let's recall he lost a playoff last year in the Canadian Open the week before the U.S. Open. So he he, he has shown a good resume in others as well. Uh, he's got a fourth in 2022 before the Open Championship, a sixth. Uh, before the Open Championship, um, uh, and that was, I forget what year that was. Oh, that was last year. Uh, he's got a third before the U.S. Open. He's got an eighth before the P- – so bottom line, Fleetwood is another player that plays well before majors, and he's never won on uh, a PJ Tour event. We know how important that would be for him. Um, so, And, again, he did win earlier this year. So uh, I think this would be a good week for Tommy to get back into contention like he did last year in Canada. So I think both these players, based on the field and based on the odds, it's not a bad week to take them. Yeah, no, I think it's good value on both guys just based on their talent long-term form. They're also – Fleetwood and Fitzpatrick also two of the better wind players um, in this field especially. And, you know, wind tends to be a factor – at these Texas courses we saw, you know, at least in spurts last week. Uh, Fleetwood and Fitzpatrick, just like Morikawa, playing here for the first time. Somebody not playing here for the first time is Corey Connors. So uh, what, what do you think about Connors for anybody? And I, I, you're going to have to tell me because I've already given my um, – my preference of taking Rory in a one and done. But if, mm-hmm. if I wouldn't take Rory and I'm somebody that's like, no, I'm saving Rory for the big events and which I completely yeah. understand, then I might actually yeah. take Tommy Fleetwood this week. So he might be the guy I go with this week. Um, if I don't go the big, the big gun route, but what about Corey Connors? Uh, because Connors has won here twice. Uh, yeah. he's never missed the cut. Everything's in the top 35. Um, and he hasn't missed the cut since the U S open. That's 15 straight cuts he's made, and he's trending in the right direction with back-to-back top 20s coming in. Yeah, again, I mean, he, he's hitting it awesome. He's first in this field, you know, ahead of Rory, ahead of Ludwig, and, you know, my, my, my ball striking metric that we looked at. Um, now, the, the around the green stuff and the putting remains a problem for Corey Connors, but as you'd expect, he's putted well here. He's gained strokes putting in four of his five appearances at Valero. Um, so, yeah, my... My concern for one and done would be that Connors is going to be popular, maybe the most popular pick just based on the course history. Um, so it's maybe some something where if you're if you're you know kind of playing with a lead in one and done, if you're off to a good start and you don't really care about ownership, you can consider Connors. If you're trying to play catch up, um, I might look elsewhere and just try to get a bit more different. Would this be the only event though that you could see yourself taking Corey Connors in one and done? I mean, I think it's the best event for him. I'm not sure it's the only event. I mean, I had nothing off the top of my head, um, but I think, you know, he'll be in other weaker fields, I'm sure, where, you know, he'll be one of the, you know, top 10 guys in odds, and I think you could consider him in something like that. All right, I'm going to pop up uh, the picks uh, as we move along here just so everybody can see what we went with. There's Jared Picks. He's got six, and I have seven, and we've already talked about our top three picks. So let's go ahead and continue because we still have two more players at 30 to one. And one of those players is on my list. And that's Alex Noren Um, Mm. on. I was definitely considering why not. I mean, he's played here four times. He's got two top tens. We kind of feel he's, he's he's due for a win this year, the way he's playing. He's coming off a miscut of players, but he's got five top 25s this year, including two top fives in the runner up playoff loss at Sony. So he's a solid uh, uh, idea. Um, But the other one, Noren. You know, with Norin, uh, he's made 12 straight cuts, seven top 25s, three top 10s, two top fives, and a runner-up. And he was 15th year last year, so he's played the golf course. And in his last three coming in, 11th, 19th, and 9th. And maybe there'll be some good karma for Norin this week with Jaeger winning. Because we talked about a Jaeger had, I believe, six Euro wins. No PGA wins. Finally gets the PGA win. Well, Norin's had a better career than Jaeger here in the States, but and he also oversees. He's got 10 Euro wins with no PGA wins. So maybe there'll be some good karma this week for Norin as well. Yeah, I consider both these guys too. I was kind of hoping for better numbers for them as bets, um, but I like them both as one-and-done options, Norin especially. Um, you mentioned how well he's playing. He's actually uh, eighth in this field in strokes gain total. 
this year. And he is first in this field in strokes gain on Texas courses. You mentioned you know him playing well here. He obviously played well last week at the Houston Open. He's the best player in this field um, over the last 36 rounds in Texas. Yeah, well, he's maybe uh, probably a sleeper one-and-done player then. If you want somebody that nobody's probably going to take uh, that yep. could uh, surprise, then keep an eye on Norin. All right, also at 35-1, to 1, you've got Horschel, Harmon, and English. Now, I've pick, I have picked up Billy Horschel, my fan, in our, in our league this, this week because I, I, he's too good to have been playing so poorly, and now he's starting to get mm-hmm. hot. So I thought it was the perfect time. He's coming in with back-to-back top 15, seventh last, uh, last week. He has four top 15s on this course over nine appearances. Three of those are top fives. He has missed a cut in two of his last three, so he's been hit or miss here. But when he's on, he's on. And he has three top 15s in his last four events with two top 10s, as I mentioned, coming in. So I like I like that kind of combination with Horschel coming in this week. Harmon, not necessarily. He's never had anything better than a top 25 here. And in his last three trips, which were 15, 16, and 19, because um, because he, he has a play here since 2019, two missed cuts and a 51st. Uh, English, meanwhile, does not have a top 25 in five appearances. So I would mm-hmm. definitely take Horschel out of these three. It'd be English for me. Um, he's, he's just playing really well consistently, like gaining strokes in, in all facets of his game. He's actually he's ninth best in this field in strokes gained total this season so far. Um, I, I just kind of I kind of like the way he's trending. Um, you know, he came 19th at the players uh, last time out. He had never I think he had never made the cut there, right? That's possible. It sounds sounds yeah, right. I think if not, yeah, he had if never, not, it was uh, once. He had, yeah, he had missed the cut in what is this? Seven straight appearances at the players. Um, so I, I I just like the way he he's trending. Um, he'd be my pick here. Though. You know, thir- thirty five is a bit short for me to bet it. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, Jan is uh, kind of high on English this year. That's why she uh, grabbed him in on her fantasy team. And uh, like you said, you know, if you look at it all year long, he's had two bad results. Everything else has been a top 25 and he's got the seventh at Genesis. So, yeah. Um, The only thing, again, that the major thing that would concern me, though, is he's just not played well here. So, all right. Um, Next up, uh, we have the next group. We got Scott, Henley, Cole, uh, Bazootenhoot. Uh, let's let's go with that group because you have what your what your second pick Christian Bazunhut and um, I like them as well. Uh, I think he's a solid play because he's really uh, seems to be playing his best, most consistent golf on the PG Tour at this point. Uh, the yeah. odds are also pretty are okay compared to some of the others, but he's trending really well. And he was a solid uh, top thirty uh, last year, so he's had at least some experience on the course. Right, Bez is first in this field in uh, strokes gained total so far in 2024. Wow. Yeah, ahead of all these guys. He's also sixth in this field in strokes gained in Texas. So I kind of like how those two things mesh. I think this should be a good spot for him. He's um, obviously come very close. He you know, got the first place money at Amex with his actual second place finish to, to Dunlap. Uh, he came ninth last time out at Valspar. So I, I just think he's close. And I think, again, he's done well on Texas courses. All right. And the other guys that I mentioned there, Scott won the first event ever played at TPC San Antonio back in 2010, but hasn't done much since. Only played here a couple of other times, which is, well, it's, it, he did defend his championship the next year. And then he's only played once since then. Um, Henley played here a couple times, hasn't shown anything. Cole, 39th last year, no top fives this year. So he hasn't, uh, captured the momentum that he had at the end of the year. Tom Kim at 50 to one. That shows you what kind of year he's had. And he hasn't been uh, playing well at all over his last three appearances, but it still kind of surprises me in a field like this that he's 50 to one. Yeah, he... He's definitely on my radar still. It's just a, a, a value play, kind of like Morikawa, right? Like I know he's not playing super well, but um, you know, just long term form. I think fifty to one uh, in this field for Tom Kim is, is a pretty good number. Uh, he's another guy who I think is pretty good in the win. I know he he played well at the Open last year, which is you know always a windy event. So um, if, if this gets windy here, I haven't really looked at the forecast yet for this week, um, but I assume there's going to be some wind, which would probably be good news for Tom Kim. 
All right, and then we've got the next group, uh, Hostler, McNeely, McCarthy, uh, Badia, Rye, uh, between 50 and 55 to 1. And um, uh, this is actually uh, where we're going to get your third choice. So right now I have, I've already had my top four. So my remaining three are long shots, um, being Fitzpatrick, Fleetwood, Noren, and Horschel. You have Morikawa, Bazudenhut, and Badia as your third choice at 55-1. to 1. He is trending in the right direction. A couple of top 20s, 11th last week. Uh, of course, he won the Barracuda last year. He's played here twice. He was 46th last year. Yeah, actually coming off a really encouraging event last week. He was actually second in the field last week in stroke scan approach. Do you know who do you know who led the field last week in stroke scan approach? Who led the field in stroke scan approach last week? Uh I don't think you'll get it, but it's a it's oh. a it's a good name. Is it really? Gary Gary Woodland. Gary Woodland. So really? he might he might be back. He's yeah, he's someone to uh, Where did he finish? Keep an eye on. He finished twenty first. He was putted oh. horribly, about six strokes putting. Gary but the Woodland might awesome. be back. So that, that was yeah, that was that was nice to see. But actually, it was second stroke skiing approach. Uh, he's another guy uh, loves playing in the wind. Even you know, even when it got windy at the Houston Open, that's like kind of when he started to make his move. So I, I kind of like him on these Texas courses. I um, mean, just yeah, trending in the right direction. A guy long term, I want to be in on. And I think fifty five to one is a pretty good number in this field. Okay, let's see. Uh, Hostler was fourth on this uh, uh, course in 2022. That's his only top 30, but that's a solid sign. Um, McNeely, 35th in 2022. He's made uh, seven straight cuts, a couple top tens. McCarthy, uh, he was 18th his last time out a couple years ago here. He's got a couple top 20s. Uh, He's never been over par here, uh, even though he missed a cut once. Um, and uh, he, he's trending a little bit in the right direction, but um, he's not, he hasn't really been contending yet. And Rye uh, could be interesting. He was top 30, yeah. both appearances, both at five and six under par, coming off a seventh place finish last week. So, yeah, Rye, Rye's someone I considered um, just hitting it really well. Uh, he's really accurate, which can be important here. If you get too far offline at this course, you can sort of get in trouble. Um, I just, he's a guy I've seen him in the mix falter too often. So I don't really trust him to win. Like, if you want to make a top 10 bet on Rye, that's kind of the direction I'd go. Uh, Keith Mitchell at 65 to 1. What a big surprise. After he blows Valspar on Sunday, <laughs> he comes back last week and misses the cut. Big surprise. Uh, he's actually played pretty well here in his two appearances, but we, we, yeah. we said what we had to say about Keith Mitchell last week and it's still, still, uh, we, we haven't changed our minds after what, what happened last week. Um, yep. Putnam at 70, Hoygaard, Glover, KH Lee, Thompson, Todd, and Shank at 75 to one. And in this group, we have a pick each, uh, as we go with the long shots, you have Lucas Glover and I have KH Lee. And I like Glover as well. I, I, so I, I like Glover. I definitely feel like he's worth a few bucks. He's coming off an 11th at Valspar. He's got three top 20s out of five here. And how about this? He's 32 under par combined over his last four appearances at this golf course. So you're getting 75 to 1 on a player that looks like he might be getting his game up again. And K.H. Yeah. Lee, as I mentioned, is, uh, is my pick in this, uh, in, in this group here. Uh, he's got two top 25s out of three, one top 15. He's got the two Byron Nelson wins, of course, in Texas. And he's also been playing well over his last four events. He has two top 10s and one top five. Uh, but uh, what about your pick, Lucas Glover? Yeah, he's just having a really steady season, kind of, you know, continuing from the tail end of uh, last year when he, he won a couple times. You know, he hasn't, he hasn't popped and won. But he's continuing to, to gain strokes across the board in most tournaments. He's actually gained strokes on approach in six straight. So you can kind of count on his iron play being solid. Um, as you said, he's been good here. Um, sixth best in our course history over the last five years. So just a guy playing well on a course he likes at 75 to 1, who, who again, won twice, um, you know, less than nine months ago. So um, seems like a guy worth taking a shot on. Yep. Uh, and then the 80 to 1 group, we have Van Royen, Gim, Riley, Montgomery, and Griffin. Out of this group, uh, Gim is part of your picks. We talked uh, about him. 
um, a couple of weeks ago. And if you take a yep. look at, uh, um, I mean, so overall, you know, we, we, we like the trajectory of, you know, his uh, future uh, uh, on this tour. The question is, are you going to be able to get him the week that he wins? He hasn't shown much here. He's missed a cut his last two appearances. But again, he's playing better than he's ever played on the PGA Tour. Yeah. I'll admit there's a chance that Gim like missed this window to win because he, he was, you know, playing really well. Mexico, uh, the cognizant players played well all three of those events. Last two times out, 67th at Valspar, missed cut at Houston, um, lost strokes on approach in both of those events. So, again, there, may, maybe it's kind of over for Gim for now. But still, even with those last two events, he's still second in this field in strokes gain total so far this season. Bezaden, who is one, Gim is number two. Um, so maybe he can find it again. Um, and again, he's, he's 90 to one, so a guy, a guy who's hit it that well this season at 90 to one, I think is, is a, a good gamble. Yeah. He's dropped to 80, but it's still a good number. And, uh, I, he's definitely, I, I think maybe Van Royen would be the only other guy I would take in this group over him. I mean, Montgomery, uh, has missed his last two cuts was 22nd last year here at six under par. Riley, we haven't heard his name in a while, so maybe he's perfect for this golf course with that ranking of 223rd. But he was 14th <laughs> last week, so that's the first time we heard about him in a while. Um, yeah. Meanwhile, uh, you go over to the next group and you got Hubbard, Hodges, Cauley, Eckroat, and Rogers at 90 to 1. Out of that group, I probably would go with Rogers because he's played, um, uh, he's coming off a fifth place finish here last year. And even though he's not playing well over his last three events, but Eck wrote he's not winning a second time. Cauley, <laughs> I'm actually surprised that uh, he's 90 to 1. Uh, he's a nice story, but I don't know why he's 90 to 1. Yeah. Hodges, same thing. He's not winning a second time within a, in a year. <laughs> and Mark Hubbard, I guess he would be the other guy, but he hasn't particularly played well here. Yeah, you know, if I was going to bet one of these, I'd, I'd go Acro. I, you know, I get it's tough to win twice in a month or whatever. It's tough for any of these guys to win. Um, I think you know the fact that Acro's done it. I think he's the most talented guy in this in this range. Um, he played his college golf at Oklahoma State, so he should be used to you know this type type of, of golf course. Um, and then yeah, you know, Bud Cole is interesting. I, I if he was one hundred thirty to one, I might bet him because he's he's hitting it really well. Um, you look at his off the tee and approach numbers. You know really in his four events this season they've been strong in, in all four of them he's putting horribly so that's what he needs to figure out but um you know ball striking wise he's he's kind of figured it out um but again 90 is a bit short for me and again look when when the peter malnati's of the world win and uh after what we've seen already this year with the long shots anything's <laughs> possible but yes yeah, uh now like i said that would be a really nice story if coley can get in the uh in, in uh in the driver's seat with a win on the PJ tour at hundred to one area. We've got Ryder, Novak, Kevin, you Victor Perez. Um, and Kevin, you, he's got a little cold now, but is another player that we've talked about just, this is in the week. Ryder keeps kind of looking like he's interesting to go with. He was third here last year at 13 under par. Um, so he could be interesting. And uh, you have finally jumped on the Andrew Novak uh, yes. bandwagon. Uh, so I'm glad to see that. So I don't have to take him this week. Uh, he's coming <laughs> off a ninth place finish here last year at nine under par. Right. Uh, and you're getting, again, a good number at 100 to one. Yeah, that was his first uh, career PGA top 10 when he top 10 tier last year. Um, it just continues to hit hit the ball really well you know even last week 53rd at houston but he gained three strokes off the tee just you know didn't chip it didn't putt it too well um the irons ha have been hot for a while now um kind of surprised he's still 100 to 1 honestly um just the, the way he's playing and the fact that he came ninth here last year yeah even in this field he's just not getting respect so try to take advantage of it uh one of my final long shots uh, and uh, as we take a look at the rest is going to be ryan moore and i like ryan moore this week uh, if you look at Moore, he's starting to now put it together. He, had, he he showed some glimpses in the fall, and here he is now in his last three events. He does have a fifth-place finish. He's, he's been top 45 in all three. Field is better. Uh, he's got four top 20s on this golf course, three top 10s, and one top 5. Now, you might look and go, well, wait a second. The last two times he's played here, he's had a combined seven over par. Missed the cut, 76th. But if you look at it, 
that's been recently before he's gotten back again. Th those two years, three years stretch, he was just awful. Actually, about two years. He was just bad everywhere. So I don't care about that. What I look at is what he was. The first five appearances here, he was a combined 46 under par here. That's the player we're starting to see again now. That's the reason why I think with everything, you know, the field, the way he's playing, his experience here at 110 to 1, I think he's a good play. Well, he's third on our uh, ball striking. And he's third on your list, list too. Um, and that and that's despite a bad start to the season. That's basically all come the last three weeks or his, his last three tournaments. Um, at the players, he gained 6.1 strokes on approach, nine strokes gained on approach at Valspar, 4.6 gains uh, strokes gained at Houston. So the irons are red hot. Um, he just the, the putter has been the issue, which tends to be his problem. But he just needs you know one decent week with the putter, and he he could definitely be in the mix. Yeah, and uh, and keep in mind though that remember it's he got off to a slow start this year uh, because this season um, he had those uh, good runs at the end in fall uh, when he was 13th at Shriners, fifth at Bermuda, and eighth at the RSM Classic. But yeah, he starts the, the new year and he's got four straight missed cuts and five missed cuts out of six. So. And it's interesting how that happens. You're in the fall. It's a completely different golf courses. It's completely different fields. And then you get to once once January hits, it's like it's like playing with the big boys, even though it's the same tour. You know, yep. it's like the fall is like you're playing on the KFT tour. Once you get to the yep. uh, uh, new year, it's like yep, you're back on the PJ tour again. Um, the only other long shot that I have, and this shouldn't be a surprise, I'm going back to Matty Schmid. I see no reason to jump off of him at this point. He's 130 to one. He's 46 here last year at one, one under par. His last four events, and by the way, just like Moore, played well in the fall last year, um, and now he's getting hot again. Uh, his last four events, all in the top 30, including one top 10, 21st last week. Yeah, hot, hot player. I know the guy Jan has talked about is um, a talented guy to keep an eye on. So yeah, why not? This is definitely the, um, the type of tournament I think he, he could he could find a win. And the only other players that I was thinking about taking long shot wise was I, I was I was just interested, but I can't take him because he was so close to winning last week. Is the kid Toasty, another player <laughs> that Jan mentioned uh, last year on the show about a, a player to keep an eye on, a real future player to keep an eye on, and and now that's his first big coming out party. Usually, yep. you don't see a player come out, play like that, and then come back the next week and win. That's just that's asking too much. He, he is a character, so I would like to see him in the mix more often because he's, he's entertaining, if nothing else. Um, the, the two super long shots I consider, my guy, Sam Stevens, who he came second here last year, correct? Yep. Yes, he did. He's just he's just, he's just just not playing well, so I, so I just didn't get to him. But he is like 200 or 250 to one, so if you want to just toss a couple bucks on him, it wouldn't kill you. And then um, Parker Cootie uh, looks – pretty good in the numbers i'm looking at this week he's obviously you know a texas guy so should be familiar with the area with the course um he was like 300 to one last i checked so if you wanted a couple bombs those are two guys i considered so it seems like you have a preference on parker over uh was it pierce is on uh yeah uh parker and pearson right pearson yeah. i don't um, know if that's pearson that's that's a really interesting <laughs> yeah. long way of saying pearson but yeah parker why do you like parker over pearson at this point honestly just the numbers i'm looking at he's he's been better across the board okay. and i know it's it's a small sample stuff you know who knows pearson might end up being better but you know at least so far on the pga tour parker has the better numbers and pearson was a uh number one amateur at some at one point i believe um, yeah. So, yeah, as far as any others, I was looking at Victor Perez. We've talked about him before. He continues to play well. Three top 20s out of his last four events. He'll be playing this one for the first time. So I, I was a little intrigued there. Um, uh, we've used a, a lot of long shots this week. I mean, Martin Laird has actually been playing decent golf. He's the 2013 champ of this event. He's 180 to one. Ryan Palmer, you always, whenever you think of Ryan Palmer, the only time you ever think of taking him is at Texas. Almost the same thing with Charlie Hoffman, because Charlie Hoffman, I think he's about 150 to one. He's made 12 out of 13 cuts here. Nine of those are top 15s, five top fives, three runner ups and a win. Mm. Uh, he, so this has clearly got to be his best golf course. And he won this event back in 2016, uh, but he hasn't played well, surprisingly, since his runner up uh, playoff loss 
uh, to Taylor in Phoenix. But Hoffman is somebody that, um, and Palmer are, are a couple of guys that when you get to this uh, kind of venue in Texas that you would take a look at. Palmer has six top 20s here. He's played here every year since they've been at TPC San Antonio, and he does have a top five. Um, but, yeah, he, he's just not playing well. And Hoffman used to be the uh, horse for the course here before it was, or, yeah, before it was uh, Corey Connors. So. Yeah. Oh, and uh, we, you know, we might as well mention his name because we haven't mentioned it before, and that's David Skins. So David Skins has popped up twice this year, fourth at the old Honda event and seventh last week. He hasn't done anything else. He, he didn't do it. We never heard of. I never heard of his name even before this year. But interesting, and he was 48th year la- uh, in 2022. His only appearance, but um, yeah, it's, it's it's interesting. He's a guy that just has come from nowhere. Uh, to mm-hmm. get in competition uh, a couple of times. Uh, do, do you like any of these other guys like um, Joe Highsmith or uh, who else's uh, names here that I've, that I've mentioned that we've kind of seen uh, a few uh, Max Grace uh, Gracerman. Um, these are guys that have just been popping up recently. Anybody yeah, I'm else? I'm just looking through some numbers now. Highsmith seems like that might've just been a flash in the pan. Great. Gracerman has been hitting it. Well, um, really most of the season. I mean, you know, he, he's, he's made some cuts. You know, that was the first time he, he was in the mix, um, but he made the cut at Amex, made the cut at Cognizant, made the cut at Puerto Rico, made the cut at Valspar. So he's, he's kind of interesting. He was seventh last week. Yeah. So yep. who's yep. the guy with the, with the, Paul, with the, the Gilligan hat. That's Highsmith. That's Highsmith. Highsmith so. was rocking the, the bucket hat. Yep. Yeah. He, 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 uh, he's, uh, yeah. I just, you know, if I'm like a friend of one of these guys and going to kick that thing off, will you stop it? Yeah, uh, kind of like a clown. Yeah, you're gonna end up like McNally. You want to? You want a career like that? Get, get the hat off. <laughs> then he, he does have two PJ wins though. Um, by the way, Ricky Fowler's playing this week, I believe, and uh, he just hasn't played well yet. Um, is he in the field? He, he was in the, field. in the field. He still is, right? I think he was about. Yeah, what is that? Unless what are his, his odds of? Uh, well, he was in the field as of yesterday, unless he backed out. Yep, there he is. Uh, oh, he's 110 to 1 now. Wow. He was 55 to 1 on he is, Monday. He has been he has been horrible. What a drop. He, he's, been, he's, he's been even worse, I think, than the results. I mean, he's had some good putting weeks the last four times out, but the ball striking has been a mess. And he's played here four times. He has three top 20s, but he's just not yep. playing well at all. 